Hi, I'm Martin. I make a kind of symmetrical picture I call snowflakes. In this video, I'll show how it's done using Photoshop CS2. I start with an image that I can call a seed. It can be anything really, but experience teaches what sort of things make the best snowflakes. We copy a rectangular patch from the seed and perform an operation I call a quad. With a quad, you take the rectangular patch and make four copies of it. One copy is flipped horizontally, one flipped vertically, and one flipped both ways. Then the copies are moved and lined up so they make a quad. In making snowflakes, I use Photoshop Actions a lot. These are pre-recordings of a series of mouse clicks within Photoshop that can then be repeated with a single click. For instance, I have a quad action that makes a quad out of a rectangle. A quad is a special kind of image. It is symmetrical around both its horizontal and vertical center lines. Snowflakes exploit that symmetry. I have an image that is a set of white triangles on a blue background. These are triangles with two equal sides with an angle at the peak between them. A circle comprises 360 degrees. These triangles have angles at their peaks that divide 360 degrees evenly. So an equilateral triangle can be copied and rotated by 60 degrees six times and the copies lined up to form a hexagon. I work with triangles that form triangles, squares, pentagons, hexagons, octagons, nonagons, decagons, and dodecagons. That is, they form regular shapes that have 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 12 sides. Later we will see that since both 6 and 12 are divisible by 6, for instance, interesting features emerge in the final picture. I use the magic wand tool to select the white in the triangle that will make a dodecagon and copy it. I move to the quad and insert a copy of the triangle. That puts the triangle into the layer, into a layer. You can see the layers palette to the left of the screen. I make the layer into a difference layer, which means it inverts the color of whatever you see through it. So it's easy to see what will be picked up. Notice the triangle arrives already centered on the vertical center line. I increase the scale of the triangle to the size we want, being careful to maintain the same horizontal and vertical proportions. Pick up the wand tool and click on the triangle layer and select a triangle. Turn off the triangle layer and click on a quad layer. The selection is still active. Notice the dotted line marquee. Select everything within that selection area and paste it into a new image. I use the 12 around action to make three copies of the triangle and rotate them by 30 degrees. This forms a quadrant with a 90 degree angle at the center. I use the 12 around 2 action to duplicate and rotate that quadrant. I place the layers so that they fill a circle, forming a dodecagon, or 12 sided figure. Notice how the bead like structure at the center of the quad now visually makes links to make a ring. I go back to the triangles image and select a copy of the white equilateral triangle. This makes a hexagon. Insert that triangle as a difference layer above the dodecagon. Scale it up to the size I want. 
Notice how the triangle just bisects one of the beads. This is because two of the sides of the triangle are exactly parallel to two of the sides of the dodecagon. And so, you can move it so it bisects a bead. When I move the triangle, use only the up and down arrows so that it stays centered on the center line. Make the triangle into a selection with the wand tool. Turn it off. Turn off the triangle layer and click on one of the visible dodecagon layers. <coughs> Select everything that's visible and make a new file. I use an action called hex all to paste in the selection and then duplicate and rotate that layer. I line them up. I start with three, just three layers and get them lined up. Select them all with the background layer turned off and paste them into a new layer. Rotate that layer by 180 degrees and line it up. Notice what has happened to the ring of beads. The bisected beads line up perfectly and merge visually causing these linked rings to emerge. Select all the layers and copy and paste them into a new file. Note that the file size can easily get to be huge. I, can regular, I regularly have files that take over a gigabyte of memory. Once I have a final image, I apply some adjustment layers to it. <coughs> adjustment layers allow you to change some of the properties of an image, like lightness or darkness, or shift colors around. First, I apply a levels adjustment. This shows a hist histogram of all of the brightness levels in the image. Slide the rightmost pointer until it touches the hill. Slide the leftmost pointer pointer until it touches the hill. This sets the lightest pixel as white and the darkest as black. Then I slide the center pointer pointer to set the level of the midtones. Next I apply a hue saturation adjustment. Usually I just raise the saturation a bit to make the colors brighter. Once all that's done, I save it. 